How's it going folks? Stu here. The worst person in the world. I mean, look, I think we can all throw our hands up and say we've all we've all been there, right? We've all felt like that. Our level guys, sometimes it feels like you're it. But um, you know, there can only be one, right? And fortunately for everyone else, it's Ted Cruz. So yeah, stand up, Ted. Stand up. You complete fucking prick. The Worst Person in the World is the latest film from director, writer Joachim Trier, uh, a Norwegian filmmaker who is brilliant. I've seen one of his previous films, which was called Delma. Uh, definitely didn't just have to look that one up. My bad. But this one has been getting a whole butt ton of buzz everywhere it's been showing. It seems like everyone that sees this film comes out of it in a state of joy, let's say. Um, there's been some big words from many big people said about this film. So naturally, you know, I'm a simple guy. I see that stuff and I get incredibly, incredibly excited uh, and it becomes the only film I'm interested in seeing for a while. I caught it this week and it doesn't disappoint. The worst person in the world is so good I kind of hurt a little bit inside. So this is a Norwegian rom-com, although it feels a little bit wrong calling it a rom-com because it's not a rom-com like you'd expect. It's a romance, drama, comedy. It's got a bit of everything really about a woman that finds herself in that weird kind of floaty point of life in her 30s where she doesn't quite know exactly what she wants to do with herself. And we follow her and her relationships. Uh, it's the third one, I believe, in a sort of loose trilogy from Joachim Trier, uh, the Oslo trilogy. I've not seen the other two that he's done, but it's not essential uh, to have seen the other two. It, it is its own sort of separate thing, um, I hope. <laughs> and it is just an absolute delight, this film. It's immediately a joy to watch. I mean, it starts right off introducing itself as a story in 12 chapters with a prologue and an epilogue. And you sort of fear, I guess, that it might be trying to do a sort of edgy way into a rom-com I suppose not that I wouldn't absolutely love that but you know what I'm saying right we've seen films split into structured acts and chapters before it's a whoa cool what great fresh new thing to do but very quickly it becomes apparent that Joachim here has this wonderful sort of playfulness and, and, and sense of humor to his direction that it immediately falls into just a super heartwarming watch. And I love the way that this film balances that genuine charm and genuine humor with really kind of uh, experimental, I guess, filmmaking traits. It's not like it ever gets hugely abstract or anything like that, but it is able to balance the more kind of, I guess, humorous and whimsical aspects of the romance genre with a more kind of technically adventurous filmmaking quality if that makes much sense. So I was fully on board with the rom-com-ness of it all but equally found a lot to really enjoy in the way this film's presented. This film is kind of exactly the sort of style of film I would kill to make, right? The look of this thing, the cinematography is always on point. It's a gorgeous film to absorb in that sense but also just things like the titles that do pop up for each chapter. I like that presentation. <laughs> Admittedly, strange thing to pull up on, but it's my review. I'm going to say it. And there's a playfulness in the film which creeps through in the sort of formal aspects of it, in its editing, in the way it's structured. It knows not to take itself too seriously when it shouldn't take itself too seriously. And so you've got certain chapters that are much smaller than others. You've got certain chapter titles that just are there as a joke and it's funny to see that. And so there's this sense of personality that runs through the entire thing, which gives it this real sense of kind of authorship, but also like this genuine earnestness to it all. And that definitely comes through in the writing as well. I mean, the screenplay of this thing just knows exactly the tone it's going for and it knows how to have fun within that tone. And the result of that is that it is a genuinely funny film. Like there are a lot of genuine hearty laughs in here and it works incredibly well as a comedy but it never uses that comedy to undermine the more dramatic moments in there uh, and the more serious elements of the film which surprised me that they were in there obviously i was expecting uh, well hoping that the film would have a good amount of drama in there but i was surprised at the places this film ends up taking you to and more so in the ways that it manages to balance that with the light-hearted stuff that comes at the beginning of the film. And to get weirdly specific again, it hits that really strange tone of, you know when something really awful has happened and you're just sad because that's how humans work? You've been crying and then you sort of get to the end of how much crying you can do 
and someone cracks a joke or something and there's that really weird in-between sort of feeling where you're sad but you just can't help but laugh at something and it just lightens the mood a bit. Really weirdly specific emotion, this film, it just slaps that emotion around like it's no one's business. I love that shit. It's, it's a really nice feeling watching a film by a director and knowing that you're in capable hands in an emotional sense. Everything filmmaking wise about this film though is grounded absolutely by a stunning duo of performances here who both just smashed it. The lead of the film is Renate Reinsve, who I've not seen in anything before, but who is just wonderful. I, I, just, I can't, I'm not sure how to put it into words, really. She attacks this thing with this genuine sense of sort of, it's kind of like restlessness uh, and a weird goofiness, but not in an overt way. There is this constant feeling of sort of discovery and, and learning about herself. She's insanely charming, very, very funny, but also absolutely smashes the emotional beats of this film. I was incredibly moved by her performance and obviously it's an incredibly relatable character and an incredibly relatable performance. But alongside her is Anders Danielson Lee, who I most recently saw in Bergman Island, which is another really charming, nice little gem. But he really, really knocked it out of the park here. His performance at first sort of seems like, I don't know, it's almost like we've been conditioned to know what that character in a rom-com is. So you approach his character in a way which feels very kind of like, I know what we're getting and I'm just ready to go with it. But actually, as this film goes on, his character evolves and his performance evolves into something infinitely more engaging and interesting and absolutely emotional. His was some of the most moving stuff I saw in the film. I cried multiple times at the stuff he's doing and the stuff between him and Renate Reinsve just the two of them are so great together on screen but i think overall the thing that i'm left with after watching worst person in the world the thing that i most appreciate about it is this kind of matter of fact free-flowing way through it all the plot it goes for i suppose is relatively straightforward on paper if you were to read it beat by beat but it's a film which relishes in going to those weird moments which might not necessarily feel like they mean a huge amount in the moment but are part of a bigger picture and are always essential to a person's growth and what you're going through and i love that feeling and i love when a director can really tap into that which makes for an insanely rewarding watch an insanely emotional and moving watch and one which sort of ends and you just kind of want to watch again you just want to do it all over i'm so excited to see it again and i'm so excited that it didn't disappoint me and that I can sit here and say that it absolutely lived up to my expectations. Slightly annoyed that I didn't get to see it in 2021 where it would have absolutely landed very firmly at the top end of my best of the year list. But hey, spoiler alert, you're probably going to see it in the 2022 list. It's that good. I have no doubt it's only going to get better on rewatch. Keep your eyes peeled as well on the channel because I think I'm going to be doing a bigger, deeper essay on the film in a similar way to I did a net last year. So that's incredibly exciting as well. But what about you guys? Have you caught The Worst Person in the World yet? It's out in the States, but it's out a little bit later over here in the UK in March. Whatever you thought about it, let me know in the comments down below. We'll have a little chat. As usual, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see me talk about more shit, go ahead and click subscribe. The button for that's down there as well. It won't bite you. I'll see you guys soon for some more thoughts and more films. But in until next time, um, I still think Ted Cruz is the worst person in the world. I think we're all in collective agreement on that, right?